Good morning, friends. It's time for worship at Pilgrim Church, and we are just so delighted that all of you are here with us. Our worship service is recorded so that we can archive it on our website, and those who are not here with us in real time can experience worship with us through the week. Um, I'm placing in the chat window all the links that you might want to have today the link to the bulletin, the link to giving, the link to pledging, and many other things. The best view you're going to have is speaker view, and I invite you to mute yourself unless uh, you are one of our worship leaders today and there's a moment in which you are speaking. And now we will begin our worship with our prelude from Dot.
welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church. We're so happy that you can be with us today. Um, we are an open and affirming congregation, which means we accept and welcome all people of God. And just as a reminder, if you would like to show your respect and support for gender non-binary and trans friends and neighbors, you can change your name on Zoom to show your preferred pronouns. That's just one simple way we can show that we care. Um, stewardship season is among us. So we each week we'll have a guest speaker to talk more about that. Today's speaker will be Michael Scott Morton. Also next week is All Saints Sunday where we honor um, people and that have um, passed on this year. So if you've lost a loved one and would like us to honor and remember them next week during our service, you can email Pastor Reby with their name. The pumpkin patch is going strong and we are going to celebrate with a pumpkin vesper, vesper service today at two o'clock. If you haven't signed up already, but plan on being there, um, just let us know in the chat now so Pastor Reby can send you additional information about that. Um, as far as Sunday school goes, we just finished our Beatitudes curriculum and next month, the month of November, we're planning on doing a grandparents month. So each week, some uh, grandparent of one of the children it, are gonna read a story to us, which will be special. So if you have a grandchild in Sunday school, or even if you have a grandchild who doesn't usually come to Sunday school, but you'd like to invite up them, you can let me know so I can schedule you in. And there's no confirmation class today, but there will be next week. So confirmands and families, keep your eye out for an email. And today's liturgist is Bob Beckwith, um, and he will lead us in our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship, as well as the opening prayer printed in your bulletin. In this holy time, we gather to praise God. Let us give thanks to God, for God is good all the time. Let us give thanks to God, for God's steadfast love endures forever. Holy One, we gather today with our church family in your presence. We have learned, we have heard, and we have read in our Bibles that you are always with us. Your presence is always near, yet at times we forget. We should know you are always beside us, within us and beyond us. And yet at times we feel alone and abandoned. Help us to remember your covenants of old are renewed in our hearts. Help us to know your peace that passes all understanding and help us to know, to trust in your presence. When we walk through the dark valleys in our lives, help us to remember you are beside us, comforting us and holding us close. May we seek your presence in the lives of those around us, our family and friends our church family, and in those we encounter in the world. May we seek your face in the face of others, and may our hands and feet be your hands and feet in this world. In the name of Jesus, our companion on this journey of faith, we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is Lord of All Hopefulness. Oh, oh, oh. 
Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Hello. So like I said, we had just finished our Beatitudes curriculum for today. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of a children's message and then our Sunday school children have also written something that I'm going to share with you today as well. So together we've been on the mountain with Jesus to learn and grow. Remember our first week we climbed up the mountain and look what we discovered. We shared about God's heart, a heart of never ending mercy and love. We've explored what God's kingdom looks like, the way the world can work when we create communities of justice and peace. We've talked about God's promises of abundance there's enough, even when we're told too often that there isn't. We've grown more in who we are, beloved children of God. And as we've learned about God's heart, our own hearts have grown. We've experienced God's blessing to be happy in the fullest sense, not in the way the world gives. We have opened our hearts and mind to the ways that Jesus has shown us to live, gentleness, humility, mercy, and love are all what makes us powerful. When tears, harshness, and persecution happen, Jesus knows what all of that feels like. And we support one another through every step of the journey because we are part of a team of peacemakers using our voices and what the power what power we have to bring justice. Even if we are misunderstood sometimes, we find joy when we disrupt systems that hurt people and when we create new fairer ones. Jesus taught us on the mountain, a place people believed was holy, special, and close to God. And now it's time to come down the mountain to love and live the way Jesus showed us. The world may look the same as when we went up on the mountain, but we have grown. We see the world in a new way. Jesus showed us how to love our neighbors and all creation with open hands and open heart and an open mind. Jesus said we are blessed when we feel what the world feels, act on behalf of those in need, and receive help when we are in need. This is how God's kingdom is on earth, a kingdom that 
everyone can be a part of. Together, as part of this great big team, we can love and heal the world. So let's come down the mountain. Now, this week, we talked about how the Beatitudes are a statement and then they're a promise. And today we made a covenant, a promise, in our Sunday school class. So let's, I'll read you what we talked about. This is called, let me pull it up, sorry. So this is a poem we wrote. We are followers of Jesus and we believe in justice. When we meet hungry people, we bring them food or give them money so they can buy some for themselves. When we find unfairness in our community, we try to make it fair by sharing, being kind, helping others, and sh sharing our support. And when we realize that we have behaved unjustly, we say that we're sorry and we ask how we can help. We are followers of Jesus and we believe in love. When we see lonely people, we make friends with them, offer our toys to them, bring them cookies or send them cards in the mail. When we see people who are sick or hurting, we give them food and water or band-aids, blankets, medicine, or bring them to a hospital or a doctor's office. When people can't access a space, we lead them to where they want to go or offer them rides or help them into and out of chairs and we cook them meals. And we show love to everyone we meet by sharing toys and making them special gifts. We say hello to them and tell them that we love them because we are followers of Jesus and we believe in justice and love. Isn't that beautiful? Now, before we end, I'll say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for your beautiful heart and your topsy-turvy teaching. Thank you for changing our hearts and our lives, for helping us to see everyone and everything through your eyes. Bring us down the mountain now with hope and strength to serve, love, and heal your world. Remind us each day what it means to be truly blessed and keep us steady as we follow your footsteps. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Today's anthem uh, is called Followers of the Lamb. It's an arrangement of a shaker hymn. Um, and as you know, the shakers were our, our religious group um, that came over in the 1770s into the United States and was very popular in upstate New York and Pennsylvania. And their worship services involved a lot of singing and dancing and movement with their bodies. So this song is very, uh, has a lot of movement and is about singing and dancing. So we hope you enjoy it. And thank you for our soloists, uh, Duncan and Wayne. Oh, brethren, ain't you happy? Oh, brethren, ain't you happy? Oh, brethren, ain't you happy, ye followers of the Lamb? Oh, brethren, ain't you happy? Oh, brethren, ain't you happy? Oh, brethren, ain't you happy, the followers of the Lamb? Sing on and song, followers of Emmanuel. Sing on and song, ye followers of the Lamb. Sing on the dance song, followers of the Emmanuel. Sing on the dance song, ye followers of the land. Sisters, ain't you happy? Sisters, ain't you happy? Thank you. 
And let the people say amen. That was beautiful. And thank you, choir. And thank you to everyone who made that song possible for us today. Friends, would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, last week, I talked about the Christian call to agape love, other-focused, self-giving love, and the way that agape love aims us toward the kingdom of God, which we would be building. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. God is love. That's our theme passage for this stewardship season. And we're talking about love. Today, we're going to talk about the world that this kind of love can help to build. We've seen agape love embodied in the life of Jesus. And in today's passage, Jesus tells us, more about what that agape love looks like when we put it into action. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. His listeners asked, when did we do that? And he said, whenever you do it to the least of these, you're doing it to me. So today, I invite us to think about what the kingdom we might build with agape love looks like and feels like. Let's imagine that state of being. I actually want you to take a moment and close your eyes and think about this. What would it be like if the vision that our children wrote in that beautiful poem came true? What would it be like if the hungry were fed? What would it be like if everyone searching for a home was welcomed? Perhaps remember a time when you felt lonely or tired or felt imprisoned, and someone came to visit you. Can you translate that to what the world might be like? Can you imagine? I want to talk about holy imagination and why it's crucial to a faith community. And you know, it is stewardship season. I think the spiritual practice of holy imagination is a big reason for faithful giving. We give because we're thankful to God for the blessings of our lives. And yes, in fact, we're going to talk a lot about that thankfulness next week. And we give because we are invited to agape love. But we also give because we can imagine what our gifts, when given together, when gathered corporately, become part of a different and beautiful and transformed world. It can be tricky 
to imagine the world transformed, renewed, blessed, and aligned with God's priorities and principles. Right now, the world seems like a mess and the future is troubled. It turns out that Matthew 25 was written to a community in a troubled time too. And Jesus pointed vision of the last judgment asked that community how they would live in the midst of challenge. And in these present troubled days, I've been drawn again and again back to this passage. This is how we're supposed to live, even in the midst of challenge. And I've also been drawn again and again to a framework from the writings of Joanna Macy and Chris Redstone. Um, this is the book, it's called Active Hope, that I'm going to be quoting from. They are Buddhist, and they wrote this book to give spiritual counsel to climate activists. But their framing really works for any moment of great crisis. They talk about the power of vision and the power of the story we tell of the present and of the future. They describe what they call three stories that people tell. The first story that people often tell in the midst of crisis is business as usual. Everything's fine. There's no reason to change how we live. The second story is the great unraveling. It's the story of collapse of ecological and social systems. I've heard both of those stories from folks recently. You might be envisioning either one of these stories, but Joanna Macy and Chris Redstone suggest that a third and radically different story should be our story. And now I'm gonna read a quote, um, just it's so important. The third story is held and embodied by those who know that the first story is leading us to catastrophe and who refuse to let the second story have the last word, involving the emergence of new and creative human responses, a life-sustaining society committed to the healing and recovery of the world. That sounds good, right? We call this story, this third story, the great turning, and the central plot is finding and offering our gift of active hope. They, they go on to say that it really and truly matters which story we are living into, which story our lives express. To have the future that we yearn for, we need to live into that story as we write it. I was talking about this idea with a friend yesterday and she reminded me of the phrase attributed to Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in the world. I think Jesus was calling his followers to live into this kind of active hope. Imagine, he said, what it will be like in spite of challenges if you follow my teachings. When you are called to give account the story you tell will be one of generosity. But not just that, the story will be of a world made better. Jesus' ministry illustrated a vision of a world made better. He taught abundance over scarcity, generosity over shrinking inward, and he practiced active hope. And as we look at our present, and especially as we look past the pandemic, we have the chance to write and live a hopeful story. Hebrew Bible scholar Walter Brueggemann spends a lot of time talking about the exodus of the Hebrew people from slavery. He says the exodus did not occur at the Red Sea crossing. Liberation happened when Moses went up the mountain and saw an alternate version of reality, a vision of possibility, a vision that was different from the people's enslavement. 
And as we look to our future, I think God is offering us the same kind of invitation to envision a liberated and transformed world and write that story and live that story. Is one local congregation going to transform the world? Well, we do change our pocket of the world. Let me tell you, even in a pandemic, you have fed the hungry, you have welcomed the stranger, you have prayed for the prisoner, you have quenched spiritual thirst. And when we join others, the world can turn toward agape love. As we look into 2021, we want to continue to write and live into that story. Behold the vision Nancy Rockwell says, the beautiful dream of justice and joy that is held up in the two hands of Jesus. If we are willing to suspend our expectations and live into the surprising reality of the God we know in Jesus, then we are invited to meet God not in some distant eternal life or otherworldly reality, but here and now in the concrete and real needs of our neighbors, just as they are invited to meet and be blessed by God as they tend to our needs as well. The God we know in Jesus is revealed, not in power, but in vulnerability, not in might, but in brokenness, not in judgment, but in mercy and agape love. That's David Lowe's. Well, as the poet Rumi invites us, close both eyes and see with the other eye. Close your eyes and see the kingdom. See hungry people fed literally and spiritually. See the prisoner visited and the oppressed liberated and the folks without warm clothes with their needs met. See those thirsty for dignity, love and kindness given glasses of living water. See everyone welcomed, affirmed and blessed. See each other in that story. See Pilgrim Church in that story. And now open your eyes and write that story. Amen. Okay, now it is time for passing of the peace. And today we're going to do it a little bit differently. Since we're all safely at home, we're going to do a breathing practice. Um, so when you breathe in, we're going to think about inner peace, bring, breathe in all of the peace you can. And then when you breathe out, you're going to breathe out peace for the world and for your neighbors and everybody who you see on your screen. I'm gonna put my mask back on to breathe. Okay. We'll take three deep breaths, breathing in peace and breathing out peace for others and for the world. Peace be with you, everybody. Thank you, Sarah. It's time for our prayers. And I do invite you, if you have something that is on your mind and your heart today, a joy or a concern, I invite you to share it. And I want to start with a joy that uh, uh, we received a, a thank you video from the Friday Cafe reminding us of the amazing thing that our confirmation class and our mission team did together last week. So this is, this is a thanksgiving from Kate Laser at the Friday Cafe. 
Hello, Pilgrim Church. This is Kate from the Friday Cafe at First Church in Cambridge, just saying thank you all so much for your wonderful donation of over 60 bag lunches for hungry people in and around the Cambridge area. Thank you to the Missions Committee for donating the ingredients for those lunches. Thanks so much to the Confermans who made those lunches with loving hands. We fed 180 people on Friday, so you all made a huge contribution, and it's just great to know that you're thinking of us, and we thank you so much for your help and your support. Many blessings. It is a great joy that we can continue to serve our neighbors. I'm ready to take another bag of food over to the food pantry from folks who are bringing things in at the pumpkin patch. We are also incredibly joyful with Lydia, who has been reunited with her children. This congregation supported her through Lexrap and through a friendship with one of a couple of the families here in the church. And we give thanks today that Lydia has been reunited with her children. Thanks be to God. There is much to be joyful for. Everything from the beautiful world that we live in to the neighbors that we meet at the pumpkin patch to this community of care and support. And there is much that we lift up for strength, for courage, for comfort, for solace. Today, we are praying for Peter, who has a multiple cancer diagnosis, and for his spouse, Libby, surrounding them with prayer, and love. We pray for Reverend Mike as he continues to recover from heart surgery. We give thanks that Jim is recovering and will be home soon. We pray prayers of comfort and solace for Elizabeth. Her sister Donna died this week. We pray for Donna's entire family to know comfort, kindness, mercy, and love in this time of grief. I want to share a poem in the form of a prayer today. It's a poem by Catherine MacDonald. In this world of strife and anger, in this world of doubt and pain, Jesus joins us on the journey, daring us to live God's reign, love our neighbor, love one another, love our God, this is the way. Love abundant, love expanding, love is more than words to say. God show us that life is abundant, when we share with all around. Love our neighbor, love one another, love our God. This is the way. Love abundant, love expanding. Love is more than words to say. Holy God, indeed, we ask that you would teach us love Teach us the kind of love that our children have named today. Teach us how to serve you and our neighbors in all of the ways possible. Your son taught us love. And your son taught us how to pray. And so we say, our creator who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. And now I'm going to invite Michael Scott Morton to offer us a word on stewardship. Classes at MIT, good morning, everybody. The classes at MIT uh, last for 80 minutes and Rebe gave me two minutes. So let's hope I can make it. Um, I, we joined Pilgrim in 1967, which makes me one of the uh, <clears throat> youngest members of the congregation. And um, I was, a neighbor suggested it to us as a friendly, small, place that had active outreach and uh, you got to know people. So I would, uh, we joined and uh, have been ever since, having raised two daughters um, from christening through church school through the choir. Now the choir happened only because they inherited my, their mother's voice, not mine. When we were in church early on, they moved down the pew from me so they wouldn't be embarrassed by the sounds that came out of my mouth. So I've learned to adjust over time and there now, Leslie is in the choir and I'm well away from her when we were singing in the congregation. But thinking back more seriously about <clears throat> Rebe's sermon last Sunday and indeed part of this Sunday, agape love, love to all people was the theme that I heard, which resonated with me because that's part of why I'm in Pilgrim. Pilgrim to me aspires to embody, embody that love helping where it's most needed as we see it, be it with friendship, support for people, food, concern, caring. And today, more than ever, as we all know, it's important to have a strong, loving core at the center of our lives because life has become rather chaotic for COVID and other reasons. So to know you have a strong core is an important thing for me. And particularly because that's what implements Jesus' Jesus's teachings and all he told us and taught us in, in, his, in his work. So we are in some real sense, at least I feel, his hands and feet, as has often been said. And it's also true where his hands and feet and his wallet, because he can't produce a wallet anymore. And it's up to us. So I give to Pilgrim to support my base. My base is the kind of people in Pilgrim and the kind of teachings Jesus has offered us. So I feel very comfortable to support my base to the extent I possibly can. So I urge you or ask you or plea with you to think about what you can do to support your base. Because our base is as, good, is as good as anybody else's base, I would argue better. And we only, become strong as a church and as a people if we really put our money where our mouth is. So during the offertory today, which is about to happen, it's a good chance for the sort of sit back, consider what you would really want to give, not want to give, need to give, have to give, to keep Pilgrim strong and to keep the love and caring that Jesus, Jesus taught us alive and well in the world we're living in today. The chat's got specifics of how we can give and uh, how to pledge and all those things. But the church, Pilgrim Church, is us. So it's, us, it's up to us to care. So please think about that and care. Thank you.
Giving God, we give you thanks and praise for all your gifts to us. We know that you are the source of every good thing. Light and love come from you. You have created us and you continue to breathe life into us through the power of the Holy Spirit. You've given us so much. It is because we recognize the gifts you have given to us that we now give to the work of your kingdom. We now dedicate this offering to the work of your reign here on earth. May this collection be used wisely and diligently that your love may be known widely. Amen. Closing him is Take My Life and Let It Be. Before the benediction, I just want to mention to you all that next Sunday is very special and filled with a lot of things. We are going to try our very best to remember the saints in our lives and those who have passed away in this last year. Please send me their names so that we can light a candle for them. We are going to dedicate our pledges and we're gonna recognize that we will be just a couple of days from something that all of our hearts and minds will be thinking about. We're gonna pray for our country in a nonpartisan way, but pray about this election that is coming up. We'll do all of that and we will also celebrate communion. So I very much invite you to be present on the Zoom for worship next week. And now friends, go in peace to love and serve our God. Amen.
Thank you, Dot and choir for beautiful